Okay, so let's talk grade list step two. So you've come up with your skills list. You know kind of what are your core key skills for your course. You may have taken an approach where you're looking at it from a lens of uh, like skills, like business skills or science skills, or you may have taken it from like a content component, kind of whatever system works best for you in your course. You've now got a list of skills that you need to look for in your course. Um, I record those as just kind of like got them, don't have them. But from a student lens or a student perspective, you now need to kind of give them an idea about what skills you're looking for. So I've gone through two different iterations of this, and I'm going to share kind of both of the approaches I've taken with this one. One. So basically, after you've gone grade list and figured out your skills, you're now going to figure out what way do you communicate those skills to your students. So what I did in the first iteration was something that looked like this. And this was inspired by a friend of mine who was in English. And what she did was she looked at uh, kind of the four different key areas. So can you communicate orally through it and work? through media and can you like read and comprehend that information? And then she had those kind of four key areas in the top. And then in her course, they would kind of look at it through, I call them different lenses. So uh, the different lenses they would look at and then the students could kind of demonstrate those skills across the various different lenses. So in my first iteration, I kind of looked at lumping my skills into kind of four key areas. So um, in science, I had my lab skills and then I had my ability to connect to the real world or be a critical thinker. Um, I had my ability to actually like solve the problems kind of more like your traditional um, components and like your understanding, your foundational knowledge, and then your ability to communicate your thinking. So I had these kind of four categories across the top. And then in our grade 11 physics course, then we had various different lenses. So I look at it through um, emotion perspective, forces, energy, that kind of stuff. And what you can do then and what I tell the students is that they need to show evidence of their learning or their growth across these four categories. So for example, you should be able to show me motion in a lab capacity. You should be able to connect motion to the real world. You should be able to show me how you solve motion problems and you should be able to communicate your motion ideas through this kind of context. So this was my first iteration and this is where I had students kind of recording. Um, they might be hyperlinks or little explanations of I can do this here. What I found was that this was a great way of organizing, but it didn't necessarily showcase their talents or their learning. So my next iteration looked something like this. So what I did was I organized my essential learnings or my essential key skills into their various categories using I can statements. And even some of the language here isn't perfect because, for example, I use synthesized data to find relationships. Ideally, what I'm looking here for is them to be able to graph, but I didn't really take my edu-speak teacher jargon and put it into common student language perfectly. And so there's definitely some refining that can happen here. And that's kind of my next iteration is to refine this and make it even better. So the goal for round two then, after you've got your skills list, is come up with a way to share those skills you're looking for with your students. And so what I do is I I share this list with my students and we go through this process twice, once for midterms, once for finals. And what they're going to do is they're going to kind of record their justification or their evidence for their learning in these different categories. And then because I'm ministry mandated, I'll make them turn that over into a level at midterms and finals. So we don't have grades and I don't give them numbers through the entire course, um, but legally I have to give you one at midterm and one at finals. And so this is kind of the communication back and forth. So I use this document to kind of share the skills that I'm looking for overall. And then on different assignments or different um, activities, I'll kind of highlight the two or three key skills we're looking for in each activity. Uh, but in, in kind of an overall because sometimes students like to see big picture so putting this skill set in a big picture is kind of step two for your grade list journey um so putting your skills into a way that students understand and can see and can interact with is the best way. Um, I used Doctopus to push this out to each student so that we can both work on it at the same time because we're a Google board, um, but I'm sure there's lots of different options out there. Um, I know that Microsoft OneNote has a way to push something out so that you and the student can interact with the same document at the same time. Um, and that's kind of what step two is, is putting those skills that you took all that time to figure out and, and collaborate and consolidate down. So you've got like your core 20 skills in your course. So now you're going to put that in a language that makes sense to your students and parent population.